Hi everyone, thanks for visiting my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Carol, the Thrifty Chic Housewife, and I'm so glad that you stopped by. I hope you will consider subscribing, like and share my videos, and follow me on social media. I will leave all the links in the description box below. So I, today I have another quick, easy, fun soup for you. In my canning group on Facebook, there was some discussion about making asparagus soup. So yesterday when I was shopping, Kroger had asparagus fresh asparagus on sale for 99 cents a pound and I thought I'm gonna seize this opportunity to bring you a video on how I would make asparagus soup now speaking first things first speaking of my canning group if you are interested in learning about canning sharing about canning you just enjoy talking about canning um, check out canning with Carol and friends on Facebook we're having a lot of fun over there a lot of sweet people gather there to share recipes ask questions learn things from each other and just encourage one another it's a great place to hang out so if you have a Facebook account pop on over and join us and then the only other thing I wanted to mention is if you haven't make sure to stop by my teespring store and pick up your canning addict t-shirt I know many of you have picked these up and are enjoying them so um, if you haven't check it out I have t-shirts in different sizes and fabric blends um, some sweatshirts, some long sleeve tees, short sleeve tees, all that. So be sure to check that out. There's a link in the description box below. So back to our asparagus soup. We are going to be making a base for cream of asparagus soup. Now, if, you've, if you're a seasoned canner, um, you should know that you really should not add dairy products to any canning recipe unless it is a recipe that is tested. So we're gonna leave out all the dairy, but we're gonna make a really nice base so that when we're ready to have cream of asparagus soup, the hard work is all done. All we have to do is heat it, maybe thicken it a little bit and add some cream. Now, as far as making it creamy, you have options. Obviously, you can add straight up heavy cream or what I have done and really enjoy with creamy soups to lighten up a little bit on, uh, the calories and the fat in it is sometimes I will use evaporated milk with a cornstarch slurry that gives you the same pretty much the same silky uh, creamy texture as heavy cream does um, but at the end of the video I am going to show you how I would make this in all of its decadence using butter a little bit of flour to thicken it and then um, some heavy whipping cream. Now the other thing too that we know about canning is you really should not can anything that is pureed. So we are not going to puree this. That is going to be something that you will do when you open up a jar. Um, and you can do that either with an immersion blender or you can use a regular blender. You could use a food processor. However you want to do it prior to heating it would be my recommendation. Um, you're just going to have to give it a quick blitz and then it will be all ready to go. So this is more of an asparagus soup base. You could certainly eat it as is if you want to leave out the creamy part, but it's going to be all ready for making it really rich and decadent by adding cream. So our ingredients are going to be very basic. Cream of asparagus soup is very basic in all of its glory. Uh, we have asparagus, of course. I have six pounds of asparagus spears that I have trimmed, rinsed, all that. And I just want, for those of you who don't know, just want to make mention that when you purchase asparagus spears, this bottom part, usually two an inch and a half to two inches from the bottom can be very woody and tough so you want to make sure you remove that and then I just cut the rest of the spear in one inch pieces. So you need your asparagus. We're also going to be adding one large chopped onion. You could do two medium onion if you prefer um, and then we're going to be using some chicken stock to make our base of our soup. You could also use vegetable stock if you prefer don't think beef stock would work too well here, but um, chicken stock certainly is fantastic vegetable stock. If you have the roasted corn stock, that would be glorious here. So if you have that on your shelf and you wanna part with it, it would be great to use in this recipe. And then we're just gonna add some spices. So really simple stuff here. Um, I'm just going to be putting everything in my pot. I'm gonna add my spices 
let it simmer for about 15, 20 minutes to get a head start, and then we're gonna can it up. As far as our processing time goes, asparagus, the processing time for asparagus is 30 minutes for pints, 40 minutes for quarts, but we're adding onion. An onion is processed at 40 minutes for pints arc or quarts. So for this soup, your processing time is going to be 40 minutes for either pints or quarts. We have to bump up the processing time for the pints um, because we're adding the onion. So we need to bump up our time a little bit. So it's gonna be 40 minutes of processing time for either quarts or pints. So it's gonna be really quick, easy, and wonderful to have on your shelf. So I'm gonna bring you in close and we're gonna get started. Okay guys, easy peasy stuff here. We're going to go ahead and add our one large chopped onion. I used a white sweet onion, but you can use whatever onion you like and then the six pounds of asparagus that I've prepped. Then we're going to add three quarts of chicken stock. I'm gonna turn that up on a medium high heat and then we are going to add some seasonings. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of Lowry season salt if you don't like the seasoned salt, you can just use regular salt. If you do regular salt, you might want to adjust it to how salty that you like it. But two tablespoons of seasoned salt is going to be great here. I'm also going to use two tablespoons of lemon pepper seasoning. Lemon goes fantastic with any vegetable and asparagus is no exception. I'm going to use a tablespoon of garlic powder. I'm gonna use a couple of teaspoons of tarragon. Tarragon goes really well with asparagus. If you don't like tarragon, you can certainly leave it out. And you could add any spices that you like here. As long as they're dried spices, you're fine. And then I'm gonna use about a tablespoon of dried parsley flakes. And that is it. We're gonna give it a good stir. I'm gonna put the lid on it. I'm gonna bring it up to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, and I'm gonna simmer it for about 15, 20. You could even simmer it for 30 minutes if you want to. We just wanna get everything a head start since our processing time is fairly short and we wanna make sure our asparagus is processed enough that it's soft enough that we can puree it. So. Um, like I said, I'm gonna put a lid on it, bring it up to a simmer, and we're gonna simmer for about 20 minutes. Okay, while everything is getting acquainted in my pot, I just wanted to say really quickly that there is a recipe for cream of asparagus soup on the internet that is by the Canning Diva. Um, that pure, her recipe allows for you to puree your soup. I'm not gonna say she's wrong, but I can't find any tested, trusted source that tells me that it's safe to puree it prior to canning it. So her recipe is a little bit different than mine and hers does call for pureeing it. So um, I'm not comfortable with that, which is why I'm not gonna do it. So I know I'm going to get that question. I'm sure someone is familiar with that recipe and someone's gonna ask me about it. And all of our trusted resources, we are cautioned about canning things that are pureed due to the fact it could be a density issue. This is probably not going to be that dense, so it's probably not an issue, but I don't feel comfortable pureeing it. So that's up to you. If you wanna puree it prior to and kind of follow her guidelines, that's up to you, but I'm that's why I'm not going to do that. I'm not comfortable with pureeing it and then canning it, and certainly not for the amount of time that I'm canning it because I'm processing as you would process asparagus. So. Just a word on that. So while my soup's getting happy, I'm gonna go ahead and get my canner and my jars ready. Okay guys, my soup has simmered for about 15 minutes. We just want things to start to soften and get a little head start on the cooking process. So we are good to go. I did wanna note that if you are using salted stock, you might wanna cut back on the seasoned salt a little bit. It just depends. I think it's perfectly seasoned, but for some people it may be too salty. So use your own discretion. Maybe start with one tablespoon of seasoned salt, taste it and see where you are. Taste it before you can it up. Not that you can't doctor it up once you open it, but I like for my food to taste pretty much the way I want it when I open a jar. So I'm spot on with my seasonings. 
like I said, adjust where you need to adjust. So we are all set for canning. I have my rack in my canner. I have three inches of near simmering water in my canner. I get that question a lot. Can I can? Does my water have to be hot, cold, whatever? So yes, I start with hot water in my canner and bring it up to a near simmering temperature. We are going to be using hot jars as well. Modern canning guidelines state that we do not need to pre-sterilize jars and lids as long as we are canning for 10 minutes or more, and we are. So I've washed my jars and I'm keeping them hot in a sink full of hot water. I washed my lids in warm soapy water, rinsed them and set them aside. If you are using the ball lids, you do not need to simmer them any longer. So that's ready. We, I'm going to be canning in quarts. Like I said, it's the same time. The time is going to be the same, whether you're processing in pints or quarts, and we are looking for one inch head space. Okay, guys, here we go. I have two hot jars and we are going to ladle our asparagus and in stock into our jars. If you want to make sure you have the same exact amount of asparagus in each jar, you could go ahead and ladle in the asparagus to about three quarters full in your jars and then top it off with the broth if you want them all exactly the same. I'm not that concerned about it, but if that's what if you want to do that, that's totally fine. Okay, once you are at your one inch headspace, you're going to take a debubbling tool, plastic butter knife or chopstick and release your air bubbles. Just poke around your jar. Sometimes when you release air bubbles, your headspace can change. If you need to, you can top it off. Just make sure you're maintaining one inch. Then I take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar to clean my rims. We don't want anything to interfere with a good seal. And then once you wipe your rims, you can go ahead and add your lids, center your lids on your jars, and add your bands to fingertip tight. And in the canner they go. Okay guys, I got five quarts and a pint. I was hoping for six quarts, didn't quite make it on the six quarts, but it's a fine. Um, but the beauty of this recipe, and I do get this question, can I can pints and quarts together? And the answer is yes, as long as they're processed for the same time. And in this case, our processing time is the same. So I have my pint in with my quarts and we are good. So now what I like to do is take what's left of my white vinegar and pour it in my canning water. We have minerals in our water that can collect on the outside of our jars that make our jars look cloudy. That happens during the canning process. So to prevent that, I like to add a little white vinegar to my canner. So now we are ready to apply the lid for the All American Canner. For the All-American canner, you're going to line up the arrow with the notch and then tighten down your thumb screws, two at a time opposites. Then we're going to crank up our heat. Some people like to start theirs off on medium high, some people like to start theirs off on high. I start mine on high to get things up to temperature a little bit quicker. Um, once we see steam coming out of our vent, you want to see a, a steady stream of steam coming out of your vent. We want it to vent for 10 minutes. Okay guys, we've been venting for 10 minutes. See that nice steady stream of steam and you didn't even hear it. It's been doing that for 10 minutes. So now we are ready to put our weight on. Um, I have a weighted gauge canner. If you have a, have a dial gauge canner, you are going to be processing at 11 PSI. For my altitude, I'm going to be processing at 10 PSI. So you find the 10 on the weight, add your weight. When it comes up to temperature, my weight will start rocking and then I can start my processing time. Like I said, if you are using a weighted gauge canner, you're going to be looking for 11 PSI on your dial. Make sure you understand how to use your canner. There are canners that are required to have the counterweight rock continuously. For those of us who are using a weighted gauge canner, follow the instructions for your manufacturer. For the All-American, it should rock one to three, one to four times a minute. So when we get there, I will bring you back. 
Okay guys, we're ready to start our processing time. We're going to process for 40 minutes. What we want to do now is slowly reduce our heat. We don't want our weight to rock that vigorously throughout the canning process. So we need to reduce your heat slowly just to maintain a rock of one to three, one to four times a minute. But at this point, we want to reduce the heat just to maintain. <clears throat> okay guys, we are all done. After my processing time was up, I turned off my heat, allowed my canner to cool to zero pressure naturally, waited 10 minutes, removed my weight and the lid and let my jar sit for about 10 minutes more. So we are all done. I'm gonna show you our delicious soup. It's not in its final state yet, but the prep part is done. So it looks really yummy. It smells really yummy. It tastes really yummy. I know a lot of times when we think about canning, all we wanna do is pop open a jar and that be the finished product. But sometimes, because we are limited a little bit with what we can do with canning safely, that sometimes you just have to think outside the box and just know that what is in your jar is a great prep that's gonna save you a lot of time. So I'm gonna show you how to take this beautiful jar of asparagus with the delicious spices and the stock and turn it into a delicious and creamy, dreamy cream of asparagus soup. Thanks so much for joining me today guys i hope you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like subscribe and share leave me a comment or question in the comment section and i will see you next time have a great day